It never fails. Uh, just as I'm getting ready to start my uh, my little thing today, uh, tree trimmers are out here at the, like the ne next house over. So I'm hearing the sound of chainsaws roaring along here. Uh, a necessary job, but um, <laughs> God, it's like going to the drinking fountain. And as soon as you get down to put your mouth on it, the water stops coming out and then you try again and then it squirts you in the face. Some of these things just kind of never fail. Um, I think today I'm gonna I'm gonna play DJ again, like I like I did yesterday with Corey Wells. Uh, I was gonna do this one yesterday and and did Corey instead. And then also thank you for all the good wishes for Marcello and Rosano's birthday. Um, they had a great time. They ripped their cake all up and you know made a fantastic mess and and I cleaned it up. And they are just a hoot, you know, it's hard to believe. It seems like yesterday I saw them when they were like six weeks old and all of a sudden they're a year old. So it's kind of, kind of blows my mind. That's, that's how I judge time. Um, when I see friends, kids, and I've known them since they were born and they're introducing me to their, their children and grandchildren. And you kind of go, holy crap. It's, it's always kind of funny when I, I'm, out traveling or doing something and somebody comes up to me and I see some guy come up to me and I think kind of an old dude, you know, he can't and they come over and they go, oh man, I, I saw you on Sesame Street with James Taylor when I was a little kid. And you're going, oh God, I'm going to go hang myself. That's it's the aging thing is, is a, it's a funny thing. It's really hard to grasp because so many things, you know, you, you know, you talk to your grandparents and they're telling you what they ate when they were 15 years old, but they can't remember what they ate this morning kind of thing. And it's just, it's a, it's an odd headspace to be in. I mean, I'll, I'll be 73 in like a week and a half. And um, it's really hard to come to grips with it um, because I'm still doing what I'm doing. I think I'm fortunate to be in sort of the Peter Pan world when you're in music you you sort of don't have to grow up never had to put on a tie even though lyle lovett wanted me to wear one every gig we played because everybody else in the band wore one and i would look at him and go <laughs> really really but uh it's been this kind of goofy life and uh, I, I hope it keeps on but the song i, I want to do today um there's an, there was an artist named Gene Clark. Gene Clark was one of the members, founding members of the Birds. He's a vocal, the vocalist. Um, he was in a group called Dillard and Clark. Uh, a whole bunch of things over, over the years. But he did this album uh, entitled No Other. And it kind of tanked when it was released. Uh, I, I think Gene had issues with the label, you know, all, all kinds of little things got in the way. But it was a monumental piece of work that's over the past couple of years has had a resurgence in interest. And it's gone down on so many uh, lists as like one of the best albums ever. Uh, it's really remarkable that it found a, a, a life uh, unto itself long after it was recorded. I mean, we, we did this back in the 70s, and um, we did it at Village Recorders, which is still one of the great, great studios in Los Angeles. And I love every time I get called to work there, except for the fact that it's the worst drive. Because in, in, generally, we'll start in the morning, and I have to go all across town, and a drive... If I drove at the wee hours of the morning, I could make the drive in like 35 minutes from my house. When the sessions normally begin, it's about a two hour drive in both directions. Um, the freeways out here, just just miserable. It kind of almost never, never stops being a drag. But so we, we cut at Village and uh, it was, it was, there was some interesting things that went on there, but before anything, I want to give some, some credit because we had an astounding cast of people involved in this album project. And I wanted to uh, 
I wrote them down just to so I wouldn't forget anybody's names here. But I'm going to run through this now. But this is I'm going to play this this the, the title track for you when I'm done with this. Um, but Thomas Jefferson K was the producer on it, and Gene was the vocalist. Gene Clark was the vocalist on guitars. We had Jerry McGee. Jesse Ed Davis, who played the guitar solo on Dr. My Eyes, and Jesse Ed was amazing. Jerry was amazing. But So Jerry McGee, Jesse Ed Davis, Buzzy Featon. So a lot of you guys might know him from his Featon guitar tuning systems. Um, Stephen Bruton, who was a fantastic guitar player, and he passed away from cancer uh, a number of years ago. I mean, it breaks my heart. I look down this list, and, and so many of these people have, have passed. Um, Cooch. Danny Korchmar, immediate family, played guitar. Uh, uh, ben Keith was our pedal steel player, and Chris Hillman from the Birds and uh, the Hillman Fure band. Um, uh, Chris has done tons of stuff. I mean, it's amazing. He was on mandolin. Mike Utley played keyboards. I did all the early uh, Rita Coolidge, Chris Christopherson records with Mike, and he's been Jimmy Buffett's like musical director for decades. Um, Craig Durge was on keyboards from The Section. The Section actually was on this album. Uh, Bill Cuomo uh, was playing keyboards also, and he's like, uh, played Betty Davis Eyes and stuff. I mean, this is some deep, deep cats here. Russ Kunkel on drums. So Cooch, Durge, myself, and Kunkel uh, did this thing together, and they and they hired, they wanted to hire the section, which was great. And Butch Trucks also played drums on it. Joe Lala playing percussion. Joe Lala was in Manassas and played with Stephen Stills and all kinds of people. And towards the end of the section, he did a lot of our gigs with us as a percussionist. Joey had this big parrot he always carried around on his shoulder with him. He was he loved his parrot. The ba his back looked like like Carlsbad Caverns. It was stalactites and stalagmites of parrot shit running down his back. You could tell when Joe walked in the room. His he looked great from the front, and then there would be this stream down the back of him where the, his parrot had been pooping on him all the time. So, um, uh, t uh, I think it's, he, he pronounced his name Matchell. Uh, Ted Matchell was playing cello. Richard Green, one of the great fiddle players, violinist, is playing violin. And the background vocals, it was Ronnie Barron, Cindy uh, Bullens, Vanetta Fields, and Clyde King. Man, doesn't get better than that. Claudia Lanier, um, Shirley Matthews, Timothy B. Schmidt from the Eagles on there. And Carlina Williams, and I think uh, Chris Hillman also sang background vocals on it too. But um, so a bunch of these people are now gone. It's it's really kind of really sad when I look at a lot of these album credits and and stuff, and you just go, Jesus, you know, so many are gone. But um, uh, Gene died. He was only forty six years old when he died back in nineteen ninety one, and I, I thought it was funny. I found out that. His epitaph on his headstone just says, no other. So <laughs> he kind of carried this, this, you know, all the way through. But one of the funny things was we were uh, in one room working, and this was a hard album to make for some reason. It's not so much it was psychodrama, but there was just an energy just trying to find it because a lot of these songs were kind of elusive, and uh, really took some time for them to, to gain legs and really turn into what they became. Uh, but Cocker was in the next room, and during the course of one of the songs, I think I've mentioned this story before, um, Joe, he was a, a little under the weather, shall we say, uh, came in, and we were, like, doing this, this one track and kind of... <laughs> It's one of those things when you know it's working and everybody kind of makes eye contact and goes, yeah, you know, it's, it, it's happening. We're, we're getting through this one. Joe came into our studio, into the control room, and plopped down behind the console while we're recording and starts rock, apparently rocking back and forth, getting totally into it. And at a certain point, slams his hand down on the talkback button and lets out one of his infamous 
Cocker screams out of excitement right into the mic, literally blowing everybody's headphones off their heads. Uh, Gene tears apart the vocal booth to get out, to get into the studio so he can kill Joe. Joe's handlers at this point are dragging him down the hall back to his studio and then they lock the door so Gene can't get in to get Joe. Uh, it was unbelievable. And then we go back and we listen and then we're, we're cutting to, uh, to tape. I, it might, it might have been 16 track on this one. And, um, we listen back and the stop when he screamed was so abrupt. You would have sworn somebody just took a razor blade and cut the tape right there. It was instantaneous, but we had to pretty much call the date for that day because everybody's ears were ringing like you had the worst tinnitus you've ever experienced in your life. So, um, but on, on the track, no other that I'm going to play, they gave, the, we talked about it and they gave me free reign on it. And I think I have four or six bases that I stacked on this. There's a, there's a lot of distorted bass and lead bass, um, doubling, all kinds of stuff. I mean, the dominant instrument, even though there sounds like there's other instruments, almost a ton of this is, is, is my bass on it. And it was really kind of thrilling because very, very few times was I, you know, given kind of lead way to, uh, to go at it and, and really do something different. So, uh, so this was a real special track to me. And, and it's great that this is, is seen the light of day and there's been a documentary done about um, Gene. And uh, it's cool. So let me, let me play this for you now. But this is called No Other. Oh, God, it's so funny. I'm, I'm looking at my camera and I think I'm, I'm moving the mouse on my laptop because it's leaning into the laptop. So I see an arrow going, but it's not doing anything on my phone. Jesus Christ, what an idiot. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Here we go.
Frankenstein on this track. Clark's no other. I mean, it was so much fun for me just to just get this kind of free-for-all and let them go. Just keep putting basses on it. Keep putting basses on it. I think I had my piccolo bass with me. Also, I had an old Carl Thompson piccolo bass, and uh, I used to love doubling parts and using that. Um, sometimes uh, it, the fun part was when you're doubling a bass part with a piccolo, you can put all kinds of effects on the piccolo, but keep the uh, foundation of the bass itself. So it sounds like an eight string, but it's really got a completely other breath to it. Uh, it's like when we used to, like keyboard players would do Fender Rhodes part, and then we would change the the speed of the tape, slow it up or or, or speed it up slightly, and then double the part, and then the, suddenly the Rhodes became a whole other sound. And uh, it was fun once again back in the days when we had plenty of time to discuss experiment and try things and not just go for the obvious. And uh, so I'm, I'm very th thrilled for Gene's legacy that this whole album is really interesting um, and that, it, that it's got a, a life going way past the end of his life, uh, that his legacy is, is going on. So that's, that's it for today. I'll play tomorrow, um, but I've got a whole bunch of... Um, things here. I was looking at all kinds of stuff that, that I was thinking about doing. One of the fun tracks I found that I totally forgot about was when I worked with David Bowie on Cat People. And I listened to it. And I went, oh, this is cool. I've completely forgot about this. I mean, I might throw that up there. And uh, But I'm going to just go on with my day now. But it was I just wanted to say hi and play Gene Clark's No Other for you. And, um, and I wish you all a really, really good day. Um, my wife has gone to the nursery to buy more crap for me to do in the yard. And so, you know, it's like like heroin or something. It's, it's like, you know, just completely strung out on getting out there and working. Um, but at least it's healthy. It's, you know, it's, it's a beautiful day outside. So take good care. Um, I've got... I'm not even going to get into it. I get these people writing to me saying that I shouldn't be talking about, you know, the first responders and all this since the whole thing is a hoax anyhow. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. Um, so I'm, I'm going I'm to completely ignore these, these, these knuckleheads 
And I'm going to say thank you again to everybody who's working so hard and putting themselves in harm's way to make this world function um, as best it can under the circumstances. And if you really think that way and think this is all nonsense and all these people died and it's really all fake and stuff, please, if you're subscribed to my page, unsubscribe and leave and don't come back because we're talking life and death, and I've, I have friends that have died from this. I don't take this lightly. Uh, and so if you're going to come in here and, and start up, I mean, there can be questions about everything in the overall scheme of things, but at the end of the day, people are dying. So don't come on here and say it's all nonsense and a hoax, and why am I, you know, saying, giving my shout-outs to these people and all this. So be gone. Be gone. Let's keep this site clean and with people of some kind of intelligence and, and just want to enjoy themselves because that's what I'm here for is I'm having a great time with you. So let's, let's keep that up in, in the spirit of it all. And, uh, and I will, I might put one more thing up right after this. I was thinking about it, it would be kind of a nice flavor for the day. So, uh, I'll say goodbye now. And then I may be back in, in a few minutes, kind of like gum on your shoe. You know, you think you wiped it off and then you go in the house and you look down at the carpet and there's still gum on the carpet. That's me. I'm the gum on your shoe. So take care.